see kids like Josh Reynolds and John Swift, uh, kids that came through my program, uh, implement all the things that were taught over the years at Hudson Elite. Uh, it's wonderful now to coach against these guys uh, at Madonna University. Not only coaching against them, I mean, these are guys that are key pieces to their, their team. They're starting on their teams, they're playing uh, a lot of minutes, and it's just an awesome feeling. I mean, I hate to actually coach against these guys, but it's just uh, a tremendous feeling that these kids came through my program, they listened over the years, and now the hard work is paying off. You gotta make a quicker move. Quick move. Hey, listen. Soon as, listen, they're not even concerned about us throwing the ball back out. So they, they're coming. Everybody is turning their head. So as soon as they come, make them come and just throw that shit back out. Tell the, hey, tell guys to be ready to shoot. I'm about to be extremely, extremely intense. Match my intensity, dog. On defense. Match my intensity. I'm acting like I'm on injured reserve right now. Let's go. Come on. Get up. Hey. Right here. Uh, the originators of Team Overlook. Now it's Hudson Elite. They come a long way. Got my boy John Swift from Plymouth Salem. I got my boy Josh Reynolds from Plymouth. It's good to see these young boys doing their thing. They out here kick their ass today, but it's all good. I love them and continue the best of success. You know, being with the program, it, it really helped me a lot. Uh, he really changed my game. He, he uh, really helped me develop my skills and helped me get to all the points that I'm at right now. Helped me with my defense. I say the kids in there right now, they they in good hands. So uh, I just tell them to keep working, uh, stay focused, keep your grades up. Uh, just make sure y'all trust Daryl. Daryl, he know what he's doing. He know what he's talking about. Real experience. And hey man, uh, Daryl, he really looked out for me uh, since I started training with him. Uh, he developed me as a shooter, individual player. He always hard on me. Uh, he helped me out a lot. He helped me get to Wayne State. I had transferred uh, this year here. He's still been on me, trying to help me get better. And, uh, I just had a good experience, and uh, I'm real thankful for him. Uh, the kids that's training with Daryl now, uh, just listen to him, keep grinding. He's all, he's got some good stuff. He knows what he's talking about. Can I get a picture? Y'all got your phone? The thing is watching. John and Josh out there execute everything that was being, that's been taught to these guys. I mean, they came out here and they were performing the way I expected them to perform. Uh, you know, it just shows that what I'm teaching is actually working. I mean, they appreciate everything that I, that I taught them. I mean, they come to me after games and they say thank you and all that good type of stuff. So it's, it's just awesome that these guys are playing the way they're playing. And obviously Josh had a huge game. John had a, a solid game as well, but you know I'm just extremely happy for these kids, uh, more kids to come, and for these high school players out there, they gotta understand that you know whatever position that your high school coach has you playing, you have to star in your own role. And you know nine times out of ten, you know good things will happen, and uh, you know you just gotta put yourself in a good situation to get recruited. Uh, just I mean take these guys for instance. I mean out of high school. Josh Reynolds went to Wayne State, didn't really play, uh, was patient, found a home here in Madonna, and now he's probably, you know, their main player on the team. Uh, and John went to junior college at Delta Community College, and he found a home here in Madonna, and they're playing together. And, and that's, the, that's the beautiful thing, is that two players that played on my AAU team are now playing together at Madonna University. That doesn't happen too often. I'm on my way to grab something to eat with a couple of my coaches, Cornell Davis and Reddick Borkins, talk about uh, you know high school basketball recruiting, just to get a little feedback from them, try to see what they're thinking, also educate them on how to help their players get recruited. Uh, it's always good to meet up with my coaches and you know talk about different ideas because they may have some things that I don't know, uh, some things that I may be thinking about. Uh, it's always good just to meet up with these guys and just, you know, just different. Kids have to understand that you're not going to be a star, so to speak. Like, everybody's not going to be a star, right? So you have to be a star in your own role, right? 
So, like, what, what do you what do you think? Like, what's your thoughts on that? This is this funny you said. You coach, you coach yeah, yeah. girls, right? Right. It's funny you said that because I just got an email the other day on this from a from a parent mm. asking me why her daughter wasn't getting more playing time. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like see first of all that's an issue because is. why are you as a parent sending the coach that's not even like I feel like you shouldn't even be doing that like you crossing the line by asking about playing time for right. one right you and should then, be asking your kid why what, you feel like you not exactly. playing exactly like, you know what I'm saying like why you feel like you not playing first <laughs> exactly. before I even go send this email to this coach exactly are you doing the necessary work to get yourself on the court, are you working hard? Uh, the position that the coach has you playing, are you doing it to the best of your ability? Because everybody want to be ball dominant. Yeah. Everybody want the ball in their hands. Yo, and that's that's part of the <laughs> issue. It's like it, it was just funny. Like, don't get me wrong. I like I like the player. Smart girl, awesome. You know, right. freshman though. Right. You know, uh, works hard, but it's still a lot that she has to. Learning to be a point guard in my system. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your job as a coach is number one to educate and raise young men. You know what I'm saying? Help kids become young men. Mm -hmm. That's your responsibility before basketball, number one. And number two, if you're a basketball coach, you got to understand that you got some kids on the roster that actually want to do this after yeah. high school is over. Right. You get what I'm saying? It's like, not just a high so, yeah. You can't go into these coaching situations just being lazy and going through the motions and having a and, and want to be one of those coaches just walking up and down the sideline with a nice ass suit <laughs> trying to be fly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of yeah. the day, you hurting these kids, yeah. man. They want to actually do it. Right. You know, so it's like, you know, kids got to do the necessary work and understand, okay, when I play with this team or I'm playing in this system, this is the position that I'm going to be playing. Right. So when you're a middle school player mm -hmm. and you know that you're about to go to Pioneer High School, you should be going to the games and you should be watching and seeing, okay, this might be the position I may be playing. This is right. how the coach coaches. Right. So you can be two steps ahead by the time you get to high school. Right. And you can know exactly what to do. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Parents need to do the same thing. I, and you know what? I'm glad you brought up the parents again because, you know what, to help that kid get along with you and to be the best that they can be, the parent has to at least come to the games. <laughs> you gotta come to the game. You gotta come to the game and, and see what's going on before game. you call Send the coach. Me an email or something. Come to the game. <laughs> you gonna you gonna ask me why the kid ain't getting no playing well, time? You ain't never came to the game. That's crazy. Kids gotta be able to take discipline, dude. Criticism. Mm -hmm. Kids too soft, man. Yeah, that's soft. That's true. Real true. Very mm -hmm. true. That's so, that's that, I mean, real shit, man. Kids are soft. Like, I give you an example. This ain't even got to do nothing to do with basketball. Remember the time where we were kids, I would come to say, I come to your house, Tinky, or you come to my house. A whole bunch of kids, we playing video games, da, da, da. When your parents dropped me, dropped you off at my house, my dad and my mom used to always say, when you come to my house, you my kid now. Yeah. So, <laughs> when you disobey my rules, right. you get the same punishment as what Daryl gonna get. Yep. It's discipline. And parents accepted that. Like, you know what? That's what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? If you want to act up, you got to, you have the right to discipline my kid however you mm -hmm. want. Now, we're not saying you got to put your hands on my kid. Because no. there's ways of disciplining kids. But the problem is, we want to make everybody our friend. And when you make all these kids your friend as parents or as mentors or whatever, then it affects them on the basketball mm -hmm. court. Because then the coach is yelling at them, he can't take it. Can't take it. Now he don't do what? Go home and cry. And transfer. <laughs> Give the kid transfer from school to school to school to school because they're trying to find a coach that's going to baby, baby them and fit their needs. They're going to coddle them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a lot of steps to this stuff to be successful at a high school level and also become a college athlete. I tell my friend Troy. Sure, we want to play at Michigan State, right? Yeah. Like, yo, coach, I want to play at Michigan State, man. <laughs> I want to play a lot of Tom Izzo. I said, listen, do you? <laughs> right, I, I, do you? Do you? Do you really want to play with Tom Izzo? Because Tom Izzo, phenomenal coach, yeah. but he going to get in your, you know what? You, yeah. you, what just happened at your school, bro? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a 
a couple crazy. You talking about, about Garland? Yeah. That yeah, Garland came to school. They just won against Pioneer. Okay. Garland, my guy, former Belleville coach. Okay. After a win, he come in there told my house how soft they playing on defense. Yeah. After a win, like <laughs> in they butt. And we the most like the most athletic team in the state, so it's like. So they don't add up. Like we got the most athletic team in the state. We not sitting down playing defense. Yeah. Wow. After a win. After a win. <laughs> so we won by like twenty two. Right. Well, you win by twenty, you still yeah. getting yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what he got to expect if he going to Michigan State. But but, but, but even in but even in general in college sports, like yeah. people don't understand. Like there's no such thing. College coaches get they can. I'm going to Howard University. College coach come to my house. My mom cooking them dinner. Oh, we want to sign Daryl. Da da da. Blah blah blah. I tell people all the time, college coaches will be your friend when they sign you. But as soon as you get to the school, you're a totally different person. Totally different person. But parents don't want to hear that. They only see the glamour on TV. No, nobody want to hear that part. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm so hard on my kids. People are like, oh, Daryl, you too much. No, I'm not too much. This is the only way it's gonna get done, man. Discipline. Yeah. Stop babying people. It's like that. In, it's, it's like that in, in, a, in a job. You can be working at whatever. If you can't handle your boss or you can't handle your coach or mentor or whatever yelling at you, giving you constructive criticism, you're not gonna make it. Right. I don't know any successful person. Mark, you, every time I go on YouTube or read a book or whatever, everything, everybody got one thing in common: discipline. Being able to handle with somebody had taught me, being able to accept constructive criticism, being able to work hard, all that stuff, man. All, I don't know no successful person out here that ain't been disciplined. They ain't been disciplined. Recruiting, like how to get recruited. So you get a lot of parents again, a lot of players, your coach, how do you get recruited? What, what do I need to do? What do I, I, I'm trying to get to college, da, 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 da. So I break it down like this. Again, being one, two, three steps ahead. So, no, I'm not, I'm not dissing any websites, anything like that. But if Tinky, you had a son, right? You had a son, and he's trying to get recruited. Are you going to put it in somebody else's hands to help your son get recruited, or are you going to do it yourself? You're going to try to do it yourself the best way you possibly can. So, what I tell people is this making a personal website with all this social media everybody follows social media so it's nothing to go on weebly.com or godaddy or whatever and create a personal website get your best game tapes get the game that you played okay get a game where uh, get a highlight yeah. so you got three right. put that on a website profile about your family whatever grade point average test scores which people don't understand that Testing is the most important thing because you can't get in school without that. Uh, having all that stuff. So you create a website. Then, I'm going, like, for instance, like on my laptop, you would, I would have, depending on the kid. So I say, yo, Tinky's son, hey man, he might be mid major division one, D2, blah, blah, blah. So what you do is you go on the websites, you type in, Division two schools. What will come up is all these different conferences, right? You go to every conference, you go to the staff directory, the athletics page, you go to the staff directory, you have nine times out of ten, they'll have the coach's name, you'll have their email, and sometimes they might have a Twitter. So what you do is you collect all this data, all this information from all these different conferences. You got the GLIAC conferences, which is like Sag Saginaw Valley, Grand Valley, Northwood, all these Lake Superior State. You go through every coach, you get them. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work, discipline. You know what I'm saying? You got to do it. Either you do that or you go to N NCSA or whatever these websites and you let them handle and put your future, your future in their hands, right? So you go on these websites, you create an email, you send your, you copy and paste your website, you copy and paste all all the good information, testing scores, blah, blah, blah. You send out a blast the email, BCC it, so all these coaches won't see each other. Won't see each other. Otherwise, they're gonna feel like it's in competition. You wanna make it look like it's a personal email. Absolutely. 
What's the worst that can happen when you send out this email? Somebody say yes. Somebody can say yes or they won't <laughs> respond. And what I did with my kids like Josh, Josh Reynolds, John Swift, uh, Skylar Lipinski, all these kids and like Chris Fazeek and these kids now that's trying to get to school, you send out these emails, if they don't respond, resend it. Yeah. Just keep resending, resending, resending. Eventually, somebody can be like, you know, I'm tired of Daryl sending me these messages. Right. Messages. Let me open they know up this. You now. Yeah, let me open <laughs> up this. Let me open up this message and see what, what's out here. Because this is the problem. Division two schools, NAIA schools, they don't have the budget. I may go to a, a conference in California that may need a kid. Send them a kid. They may not have the budget to come recruit this kid. But since I gave them a lot of game tape, told them a lot about his character. Told him a lot about his his parents, his testing scores. He'll work hard for you, this, that, and the third. They might say, you know what? I trust your word. You do coach at the college level, so obviously you are going to try to feed out some good kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Can you bring him down here to me and just check him out? And yeah. most of the time, good things happen. All these kids ain't ESPN top 150. Like, right. I was having a conversation with Imani's dad. You know, parents like, oh, is Lonnie a top eighth grader or this kid, He's he has, he gets to go to Kentucky and this, that, and third. People fail to realize that his dad is not using the top eighth grader as a crutch where, you know what, I'm going to let that work for him. No, he's actually doing what the kids that's up under him should be doing, <laughs> connecting with these coaches, sending him to places, taking, driving him to places so he can build these relationships with people. So at the end of the day, you know what? I like this kid. He's been around the program. This that third. Uh, why wouldn't you, as a player? Why wouldn't you, as a a kid that's you know got talent, but you're not getting seen? Why wouldn't you do that? Why don't you just pop up to a college? I mean, even though it, it might not be that easy, but hey, coach, ready? You know, I know you at U of D right now, but can my kid come watch y'all practice? Can he come practice? Can he come shoot with the guys? You may say no. Then you might say yeah. Now that coach got a chance to see this kid in action, hanging out with these players. It's networking, man. Nothing. This world is all about relationships, man. It's all about relationships. Nobody's successful without relationships. When you build relationships and you network and you connect with people, good things happen. You know, people who have fucking degrees. Can't get no job. You don't know how to talk. You don't know how to build a relationship. So just little things like that. So if you're trying to get recruited, do those little things. You know what I'm saying? Send out emails. Social media is huge now. You got Instagram, all this kind of stuff. How the hell you can't get to school? <laughs> Don't get a chance. Twitter, all the coaches on there. How you can't get to school? Just use, uh, everything is on Google too. Yeah. You used to send DVDs out. Oh, Ain't no God. DVDs no more. Come on, man. So just little things like that, man, that, you know, get people over the edge.